Uh, this is something we came up with, which was sort of to address a number of things that we thought, from, you know, from, from a teaching perspective, we wanted to cover. Obviously, feet and balance, alignment was another one, uh, head over the front knee. So what, what, there was a very interesting discussion here about this head over the front knee, which I only realized when a parent came to me and said, um, look, I don't know why my son plays so well through the onside. I never could do that. Uh, and you're talking about pretty you know, ordinary players here. Um, and that's when it struck me how important it was from this drill to ensure that the head was over the front knee. And, and just by being in this, in, this, in this grid, you manage to get your head over the front knee, as Sid has done here. And I'm, maybe Sid can very quickly tell us some I mean, Sid, you, you use this quite a bit with young children. Any, any benefits of you? I mean, what have you seen? Anything that you've sort of... Anything that you can highlight for us? Yeah, so the big, big, big challenge was the point which you just mentioned with young kids was balance, alignment, watching the ball. It was also about transferring weight when they were playing. Uh, it was the contact point. And, you know, it, it, it was that sort of clash between, you know, how much they understood and how much we would, we would say and explain to them. It's with a tell and, you know, listening, kind, you know, questioning and all that. So one thing which I observed was they were, they were listening, they were saying the right things, but their muscle memory was not developing when they were playing, trying to play the front foot shot. This, which our equipment of the batting grid, absolutely changed the way the kids started to actually take control of their game. So we put it on, say, for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and they'll bat on it, and they would understand how to transfer the weight. They understood where to meet the ball. And when we moved the grid away and made them play without the grid, what was interesting was those questions which we were asking and they were giving good answers, but unable to do, sort of replicate that, they then automatically started to take that responsibility. So they would say, no, I didn't watch the ball. I didn't get a line to the ball. My head was not over the ball. So, you know, the whole rocking movement. And so that was just, you know, fascinating to see how the how that change happened and you know we've used it extensively with slim bats tiny tiny balls with bowling machines with throwdowns and it's been a real game changer for me